My name is Barry Diakon and I work as an undergraduate lab coordinator in engineering physics. Uh, the purpose here is to uh, uh, help students uh, learn about science and engineering through practical uh, interaction with, with tools, with problem solving, with equipment. Scientifically proven that they actually uh, engage more if they're using their hands to turn knobs rather than simply sitting in a chair and reading a book about turning knobs. Actually turning the knobs makes a big difference. I'm in charge of all of the nuclear related labs uh, in engineering physics, which involves radiation science, labs inside the nuclear reactor, and thermal hydraulics. And then there's also these instrumentation labs, which uh, uh, involve sensors. And it's not necessarily nuclear, but it sort of tends to be used a lot by the nuclear students. Today we went into the nuclear reactor and there we did a lab called neutron attenuation and the purpose of that is simply to find out how neutrons interact with matter and how they act differently from gamma rays would or, or other kinds of materials that penetrate matter. So the neutrons are very penetrating but they penetrate some things more than others. So the purpose of the lab is to show students just how uh, neutrons behave and how they have special properties that are very different from gamma rays. Gamma rays will be stopped by lead and other heavy things like lead, but neutrons are more commonly stopped by light things like water or carbon or plastic. And so uh, this gives neutrons uh, the ability to, to be used for imaging technologies. Uh, so another lab that we do is the Neutron Radiography Lab, where we take pictures of things with neutrons that are very different from what they would get with light or with, uh, with gamma rays. So one of the other labs we do in third year is for a half-life. In order to make something that has a half-life, we have to irradiate it. And so we uh, put a sample in what's called a rabbit tube, and we uh, use pneumatic air pressure to send it off to the nuclear reactor where it will be irradiated for a prescribed amount of time, usually just a few seconds. And when it comes back, it, we find that it is radioactive, and we uh, then measure the half-life of, uh, of whatever gamma rays are coming off. Because what we want the students to do is, is try to identify the unknown by, by how long it takes for it to decay. Uh, you can get a decay constant and then from that you can get a half-life number which we can look up in some references and uh, form a hypothesis as to what it was. There's other labs that we do in the reactor that we didn't look at today, but they mostly involve how the reactor responds to doing different things and these are classical reactor control kind of experiments. Well, I always like giving reactor tours because I can show people stuff and I can kind of tailor it to the crowd as to uh, what their comprehension level is. Uh, when uh, we do a tour, sometimes people are apprehensive and sometimes uh, uh, they're, they're excited. People who are touring the reactor uh, usually have three, or we've prepared three answers to the three most common questions. So, and the answer to all of them is no. So the first question is, do your children glow in the dark? Uh, no. Uh, has anyone ever fallen in the pool? The answer is no. And the third question is, can the reactor blow up? And the answer, once again, is no. The only thing we use our reactor for is to make neutrons. And uh, making neutrons allows us to do research with those neutrons, to take pictures, to make radioactive isotopes, which can be used for medical treatment and, uh, and for analyzing matter and th those are the main purposes of a reactor like ours. I like dealing with the students, helping them uh, learn. Not all the students are bright, but uh, a lot of them are and uh, they want to learn. And uh, there's always a mix of personalities. That would be true in any kind of engineering or teaching discipline. But in, in engineering, we get to show students how stuff works and how to actually solve problems. And getting people to the point where they're actually uh, able to solve problems on their own is, is the, the biggest trick. People who are involved in engineering quite often are humanists. We're fully rounded personalities, we're not just geeks. There's always a geekdom part to it there, right? But we uh, are involved in the community and we want to, uh, want to make a difference. 